day to you. My name is Bobby Bullet Saint Germain, and um, I'm going to sing a song here called "Looking at Me." The first time it's sang in public at the Tiny Desk uh, contest. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. I may disappear when you're looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. Take a closer look and you will see. you been fishing, Jarrett? Well, Devin, my whole life. Ugh. How are they snapping, boys? Like always. Ugh. They're not. Could be the bait. I'll take a beer. I'll have a brat. Can you believe it? Fish just ain't biting today. Oh, boys! Who's that? Ah, uh, don't look. Best day ever! I love fishing. Oh, yeah. 
I love fishing. Yeah.
acaba, so. <laughs> Four cocktails and a shot of gin I'm ready for my evening to begin My world is spinning and my mouth is dying Maybe I shouldn't I've gotten so high A couple beers later And I'm on my feet Running, laughing, screaming In the street Wake up in the morning And it's unknown how the hell that I got home This is the way that we waste our life This is the way that we waste our life Be trying to help common appears us. All they ever recommend is 12 steps and Jesus. I 
I work hard, I've been in love once too Why can't I be fulfilled, why can't I shake This case of the blue Wake up in the morning and it's unknown Is there any place on earth I can call my home? This is the way that we waste our life This is the way that we waste our life Get a job, get a house, and get married. Get old, get bitter, get cynical, get better. Realize no matter what you do, you can't take any life. Stop with you. This is the way that we waste our life. This is the way that we waste our life. Take much for all, diesel 
on my sock But you never see that mean old slippery smoking on the rocks Ran this rambling day down the California coast But it's down in Death Valley where she did live in the most In the clouds of the wind, cold day, 91 sea breeze And 5,000 feet of hill, riding the highway down Get no warning for that cactus print And sleeping still no good on the rumble still have In the clouds, eat the weed, eat the road, eat the 91 sea breeze And 12,000 feet of hell, riding the highway down Riding the highway down Riding the highway down Chin, one trick with your wife. Drink an appropriate amount of that man's life. Drink it for peace or drink it to fight. Drink an appropriate amount of that man's life. Go to bed at eight or party all night. Drink an appropriate amount of that man's life. That man's life. That man's life. Drink an appropriate amount of Athens Light. Enjoy Athens Light at Pizza on the Farm every Friday and Saturday. Stony Acres Brewing, Athens, Wisconsin. Drink an appropriate amount of Athens Light.
I love it when default is not really default. A default. Yeah, default is really nothing. <laughs> A default or default. <laughs> Oh, where are we at? Hey, welcome. Welcome to the Midwest Music Hour, a special session tonight live from the Black Sheep Inc. Tattoo Parlor and Piercing Room in downtown Manaqua, Wisconsin. I'm your host, Scott Kirby, and uh, joined this evening by proprietor of this fine establishment, Miss Megan Hunt. Uh, there she is. Yay! Yay! Yeah. We are, uh, we are stoked to be with you tonight, and uh, sorry about the little delay, but hope you were entertained while you were waiting. Um, you know, it's, uh, what did we say in the, uh, the intro? Uh, Meg is, like... Never on time. Meg is always late. <laughs> yes, she's always late, right? <laughs> no, uh, in, a way, in a way, you're getting back into music after kind of a hiatus from it in terms of being a focal point of where you focus your creative energies. Uh, you've had some things happen in life since you recorded your first album many years ago, a right? Yeah, a couple days, yeah. just a few, a few moons, a few suns. Many, many. And, um, you know, and so it's really exciting to see you pick up your guitar again and go out in front of people and share your songs and your stories and, and let them peer, peer into your life uh, in that way. Uh, aside from how they've been doing it in, you know, in like this tattoo parlor where people come and... Uh, you know, get inked and share their stories with you, you know, in a whole other way. Uh, I guess part of me thinks that maybe there are a whole lot of songs in that experience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any yet? Not yet. <laughs> no, you don't have any yet. Okay. I'm still trying to remember who I was when I wrote them so that I can figure out how to do it as who I am now, I think. Yeah. Um, so the shadow work of knowing who you were then and, and, and getting it out and getting comfortable with that. And sitting with it and um, saying, okay, that was then and, and this is now and this is this version of me and what does she have to say? And I know that there's a lot. Um, I never shut up, but uh, <laughs> as far as the songs go, they'll come and once they do, it's um, trusting it and letting it out, I think is probably the key. Yeah. Trusting myself. Yeah. What, what, you know, is that where some things come from for you creatively? external scenarios or things that hit you, impact you from life other than yourself as well as, you know, your own life experiences? Absolutely. Um, I think when I started writing, I, I did it, to be blunt, I was sick of watching a bunch of dudes um, <laughs> sing about, like, you know, hooking up with this chick or, like, all this bragging rights crap, and I was like, what about us? What about me? Um, you know, the, the women are living these lives and giving each other nods across the room like I see you yeah I see you but no one's talking about it um so I thought why not talk about it on a stage and um if it risked making a few people uncomfortable better um I wrote songs about my roommate and myself um other people some are completely false and um I think for me even if I write something that's that's not about anybody or anything that I know it's it's something that I need to get out and if I I'm not ready to face it or think it through or let it go yet. I can't. I can't write about it, um, and that's pretty much why I stopped writing. I didn't want to know what I had to say anymore. It's heavy. Very. It was very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But um, I think that singing and picking it up again. It's not so much about how I have what I have to say this time, because um, I it's, I write all the time and I talk all the time and I. You know, this shop is in the public eye all the time. Um, I think this time it's just about um, how it feels. You know, the release and just to lose yourself and not have to be in this complete, you know, center core sense of control um, for myself or a client or my children. Um, I can sing a song to you guys and you don't know if I've messed it up or not because I wrote it and you don't know how it goes. Yeah. Um, my lines don't have to be perfect. My my precision doesn't have to be flawless. It's just, you know, perfectly imperfect as it is. And it's the feeling of letting it out, I think, is so important. And I've just been gathering all of these stories of my own and other people's and carrying them with me and carrying them with me and carrying them with me. And even if it's the same song over and over, getting it out and sharing it with other people, it then becomes theirs and the next person's and the next person's and maybe 
this part of your story is relatable or it's not. Um, so the first time I tried, I don't care. It's just, it just is. It's just is. Has, uh, has parenthood changed your perspective on any, any of that? Oh, it did that. Um, Cause I, I don't, well, let me ask you this first. Like when you put out your first album, you know, many years ago, were you a parent then? No. Okay. No, I was not. Um, I was uh, just graduated college. I was 21, 22. Yeah. I was... Um, Wild and free! Fresh off the book. Going to change the world, but truth mattered. Like, let's, woo, let's let it out. Um, no. Yeah. No, I was brand new. So I didn't even think I wanted to be a parent. Funny, funny how that happens, right? I was told I couldn't actually have children. Um, when you go through dark and twisty stuff when you're younger as a female, sometimes things happen and shift and you're told you can't have children. Um, so I, I was much to my dismay, I can have children once every six years. <laughs> Not anymore. Stop close. But, um, so I think that it was... Not all, and I didn't babysit growing up, my goodness. The first time I changed a diaper was the day Noah was born, my oldest son. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah. And now I'm still changing <laughs> diapers again. <laughs> 13 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting back to, um, you know, the notion of perfection and performance and whatnot, how is that, is that a different reality when you're in the studio or when you were in the studio making that album? Uh, were you concerned about perfection, or oh, did no. it still still matter? To I was not concerned about anything but buttons. Um, we were we shared a studio with Slipknot. Um, I'm originally from Iowa, and I didn't know who the hell they were. Like they didn't have their masks on. I knew this drum kit was fucking like huge, and they let us touch it. And um, we we had no idea we were going to be in different rooms recording the album. And I was kind of I had wrote most of the songs all but two, and. There was a whole lot of eye contact that would go on. So like, okay, end this song with, yeah, good job, or this is exciting, or do this more. We couldn't see each other. Um, so it was terrifying but exciting, and we were in way over our heads, and um, we were just stoked to be doing it, you know? Like, you're 22 years old in a podunk town in Iowa in a recording studio with a major band and touching buttons. Like, it was dope. Yeah. It was super cool. I, mean, I've, I brought one for you. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's still in the gel case. Yeah. Awesome. That is so cool. That is great. So, Shrek but you say we. Were you in there with a band? Yeah. Okay. I had an all-female band. No um, way. Way. I was, Jeez. Yeah. I had been in a cover band, and I did not know how to play an instrument. Um, and our bassist quit, and we had like four gigs coming up that next week. And uh, the guys looked at me, and they're like, all right, you're going to learn. And I was like, uh, well three notes and you're set like G, C, and D. Yeah, you know, yeah. like the roots to that. And, I was like, <laughs> and then um, that made my hand strength much better. So I finally picked up the guitar and I took all of the years of angsty poems and put them to music. And the guys didn't want to play them. Um, go figure, right? Mm. Not cool. Um, yeah. So I quit my cover band and I went shopping around my little college town for women to sing my girl songs. Um, I met a bartender slash classically trained violinist slash guitarist slash I taught how to play the bass, um, Leah, who is now a teacher in Florida. Um, another classically trained violinist named Desiree, who played the keys also. Um, a flame red haired skateboarding hippie girl named Jess, she was the drummer. Um, yeah. That's awesome. It was nuts. And uh, we named it Where's Richard? <laughs> Because there were, there no, were dudes. no dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or, you know, the inference there. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> we made the cover of the campus pa newspaper, and the headline said, These chicks have no dick. And, um, <laughs> yeah. That's yep, that, was a, that was before yeah. our first show. It was at People's Bar and Grill. It was the best, sh like, I don't know how the hell we got. That was our first gig. And it was, like, the place to play. Like, the samples played there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was you. But the guy who owned it actually started the Hinterland Music Festival in Iowa. No way. Way. Wow. I, my roots are like, Jeez. They, they spread deep. Um, but that, that was our first stage. Just stupid. We had no clue what we were doing. 
Um, but how we were fun. hot. We how were fun. hot in the West. <laughs> um, but I was sitting in my, my literary study of the Bible class that morning. And um, I was nervous as hell, but whatever. And all of a sudden, the door opens. And this dildo flies through my, my classroom. <laughs> and it lands on my teacher's desk. Oh, and uh, the guy goes, where's Richard? And the teacher walks up. And I hadn't seen the paper yet. And she puts it on my desk. She's like, good luck tonight. And that was it. And I was like, wow. Whoa. I don't know how to feel right now, but she's not mad. So, <laughs> giant flying dildo and, um, you know, no dick paper. That's wild. Uh, grand entrance for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not worried about anything. I was like, survival. Um, yeah. yeah, it was cool. What, what uh, ultimately was the end of that chapter? I graduated. Um, we did a little Iowa tour. We were um, actually accepted to play at Summerfest. But we never made it because we were a bunch of chicks and we were unorganized. A um, couple small labels approached us but just wanted me, and I wasn't comfortable with that. Um, so I said no. We played our summer out. Um, I got a burr up my butt and moved to San Francisco. And uh, that was that. But we're all still friends. Well, um, our, my drummer just posted the whole album on YouTube, dear God. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Reunion tour! It's so... Like, it's, I mean, it's extraordinary, but it's fucking terrible. It's bad, but it's awesome at the same time. Like, I listened to it, and I'm like, wow. That's... Um, I'm not even sure what's happened there, but uh, we were jamming, for sure. Yeah. Something you could do again next weekend. Oh, totally, except I would touch the button. <laughs> I would take a, I don't even know what I would do. Way cool. I'd need a babysitter or two. Or a few, yeah. I'd need an army <laughs> and, you know, someone to run this place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how do you, um, how do you feel about getting into a song? I feel a little weird. I feel a little weird about <laughs> singing for y'all. I feel a little strange. Um, so, uh, the, uh, yeah. Is that, is that cool? Or, or you want to just, just not tell, for a while? You can do it. Uh, <laughs> I can. You should, tell, you should tell a story of how I know you. I do. I know you, Mr. Kirby. Uh, um, yeah. Well, uh, is it, where do I begin? You were, you were playing birthday parties back then. My birthday friend. parties. Birthday That's parties. right. Oh, geez. Campfire birthdays. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You were my surprise. <laughs> you were my birthday present. You were my surprise birthday present in a living room not much they're like, bigger than this. They're like, hold your horses, Meg. Look what we got for you. Oh, come Here's... sweaty, Kirby. <laughs> like, I'm just like, beaming. I walk into this house and I'm like, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. These people, they These don't know people me. Don't know me. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, you were the up and coming back then. But like, I, yeah. That was, it was pretty cool. That's the only surprise birthday. That's one of the only birthday parties I've ever had as an adult. You were, you were my gift. Damn. Like yeah. And I, that was like one of the first house shows I ever did too. Really? And it was so, you know, I mean, you talk about being outside of your comfort zone in some ways when you're used to plugging in and singing on a microphone and in a noisy bar and then yeah. all of a sudden here you're at a home you're and there's like everybody's just staring at you and you're just like, yeah. this is okay and yeah. I don't want to suck. And they invite you there, but you still feel like you're intruding, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you're yeah. like, I'm sorry. Yeah, even though, you know, people are very kind. Yeah. You know, it's still just one of those things. Yeah. 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 I felt, um, it's funny when I look back now, I'm like, that was my 30th birthday party. Yeah. And I'm through with that. <laughs> We're old, man. We're yeah. Old. What was I, 20? <laughs> I don't know. You have to out yourself. Man, I was still older than you back then. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> No wonder you were like, yeah, now you're a dad. Now I'm a dad. And you're doing all this. Who would have thought? This is what we're doing. From the living room to, right. to this. <laughs> Campfires in the living Campfires room. Campfires to, to, to tattoo parlors. Tattoo parlors. <laughs> I think that's a not a bad journey. Yeah. yeah. That's a perfect, perfect lead into a song. Fine. <laughs>
Tag me with your sign, it says beware. I'm the bitch of mystery and of myth. But I'm still the one you want to be with. Just lay me down. I think I'll spin you right around. I'm a girl that wants to be a dog. You're touching buttons. Well, I live my life every day by day by day by day by day. I got no time to just stop. Mother said, make it, you'll have days like this. Where your boundaries fall, and baby girl, your landscapes are gonna shift. So just lay me down. I think I'll spin you right around. I'm a girl that wants you so much more than to be a door. took me up where I, I don't think I'll think I could breathe. You pulled me apart and I know I set you free. There was no time I could sit still. Well, baby, you had me at my will. You laid me down. I think I spun you right around. I'm a girl that got so much more than just a Think of that. I, what was all of that was about a boy named Joe. <laughs> Joe broke my heart. He was great. First guy that ever told me I was smart, and I was done. You gotta do that. Because you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Wait, you, you're saying uh, the compliments were uh, yep. uh, things you rejected? Um. Or it made you uncomfortable? No, I quite liked it. I liked it because it had nothing to do with what I looked like. Um, yeah, he was like, dude, you're hot. He's like, I like your brain. He said, you are so smart. And he and must like, have read a book or something. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah, but then Joe graduated and moved to Seattle. And I cried. Mm. I missed and that was when you were still in San Francisco? No, I was in Ames, Iowa in school oh, and okay. in college. I moved to San Francisco after that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't last long. Oh. No. It was right after the dot-com folded, so there were no jobs. Oh. Anybody? 
and everybody was used to making like a ton of money and so it brought it out like just the ugliest of the ugly and uh I got screwed so I ran back to Iowa and hung out for a little bit and then I went to a music festival a little festival called Bonnaroo Bonnaroo the very first one what yeah I was there no way yep I was there Met some cool people from Portland, Oregon, and I said, okay, I'll go there next. So I did that. And how long were you in Portland, Oregon? I was there for four or five years. Cool time. What eventually brought you back to the North Woods here? Um, I moved back to the Midwest because my father got diagnosed with cancer and felt compelled to come back and mm. kind of do his thing. Good reason as any. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Yeah. So I sold my house, loaded up my car, including my dog. I bought a pug named Gus in the Home Depot parking lot. No way. Uh, yes. <laughs> he was a run. He was terrible. Yeah. Um, I had no business buying a dog, but I, I bought Gus. He lived to be 18, actually. Jeez. Longest relationship I've ever had. Right. <laughs> I didn't take care of him at all. He just hung out. Like, he needed very little from me, so he survived for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough as nails, man, that dog. Um, yeah, Portland was great. I ran a coffee shop, and I was a women's abortion counselor, a ballroom dance teacher, and a special ed teacher at school. Mm. I almost did that my whole life. So. Are there certain things that you miss about life on the West Coast compared to life in the Midwest? Oh, my. Thai food. Thai food. Thai food would be my favorite. Um, mm. The ocean. Obviously, my friends, the coffee. Um, yeah. That's the cool thing about Oregon is you can see every kind of landscape in one state. You can go from the desert to the rainforest to the snow-covered mountains to the cities to the coast in, in a day. Mm. I had no idea that that's where I was headed. Knew nothing about Oregon, but some cool people lived there. Um, so it's pretty neat. A little more, more variety than just uh, lakes and farms and woods and yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, Portland was um, still the place of hippies back then, and it made the transition from like hippie to hipster like right as I was leaving, um, which was interesting. Hmm. But mostly the fashion manifested in the dudes. So they went from like bell bottoms and dreads to like skinny jeans and like this. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> These things are endearing, you know. Right before my eyes. I was like, so that happens. Like, you're, you're doing this now. Nice and first. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. Oh. Are there, um, have you seen anything uh, in the Midwest sort of like adapt or adopt any of those coastal um, Boy. Things, idioms, or coffee shops. Coffee yeah. shops, a little more widespread now than um, they were back then. You know, like I think the thing about the Midwest is like people are not trying to be, they're not trying to be as defined as I think that the coast is. You know, like people here are just doing the thing. Sometimes, it's a comfort zone. You know, like it's like a. You get up, you go to work, and you don't have to be defined by like some pseudo role or, you know, like undercover superhero thing you got going on. Like, I'm this, but I'm really this. Shapeshifter, you know, like you can just, you can just work in McDonald's or you can just be the best carpenter in the area or, you know, you can own a bug company or you can be a graphic designer or you can be a mom. But out there it's like, well, I'm a mom, but really I'm riding out. Mm. Oh, Okay. We're all ready. Just so you know, I'm still following my dream. I'm still in, man. I'm going to be an actress. I am an, I'm all the time, every day. Don't believe this. Oscars, that's There's it. something else deeper. Yes, this is, you know, <laughs> you're only allowed to be, you know, I don't know. I think that, but I also think that that becomes complacency too sometimes, you know, like mm. the arts and growth and discomfort aren't as encouraged as much here as they are out there, you know, like you're weird if you are a musician and you don't yeah, you are. have a real job. <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah. we are. We're fucking weird. <laughs> weird I mean, weirdos, yeah. Um, so I think it's, you know, the polarity in each place has its benefits. Um, but it, they also have their negatives, for sure. So. 
And like a cost of living comes to mind. Ooh. You know. Yeah. Um, which is, for me, if I may interject, Please. Uh, it that part of the equation has never made sense. Right? You're going to go somewhere where it costs you more to live. You can't do what you want to do That's compared cool. to living. Watch. What? <laughs> Oh, oh, is it, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the, the rational mind, but it's cool, man. You know, I mean, like, what, when I was here in 2005, yeah. like, uh, you know, that was my apartment. Yeah. And the coach house. Me too. On, you know, yeah. the little studio apartment yeah, there, you I know. I can't believe that the fire It's such a tragedy. Right? I lived in the know. one right below where the fire started. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was the opportunity, you know. It was, like, under $300 a month right. to live there. right. And you could go out and you could play music two or three nights a week mm -hmm. and pay your rent for the month right. and get your other bills scored away. Right. You know, Don't forget about that. Why would I want to go be part of some rat race in a big city where it costs $1,200 a month to live? Well, theoretically, you know? because you're going to get paid enough to compensate for the gap there. Oh, the financial oh theoretically. Oh, it's a theoretical. That would be the textbook <laughs> version, the economic theoretical version. Theoretical. Oh, okay. Um, but no, it's a uh, work harder to live cooler. Sure. Or, you know, I don't know. I think it's all ridiculous at this point, though. The cost of living and the effort that it takes. And, you know, if, if you can't afford eggs, get chickens. Well, I don't even have time <laughs> to take a shower. <laughs> I've got to raise chickens to, to eat eggs. Like, Just a every, few minutes every a day. One, every step Nate, takes 27 more steps. And it's like people wear watches to count their freaking steps. Like, so much, you know? Yeah. Like, just. What does that get us away from? The essence Logic. of being human, or is that just part of the human experience, you know? I don't think it's part of the human experience at all. I think it's the antithesis of it. I think it's a distraction from being human at all. And I think that if it can keep you, I don't even know who that is, so don't ask, um, distracted enough, then the questions aren't there, and the creativity is not there, and the energy is not there, and control is easier. And the why, it's, it's a constant state of fear and the need to control, I don't know. Like, I, I have this whole philosophy about, I'm 45 and I have a pseudo toddler. I'm not having fun. I'm not supposed to be doing this at my age. I have to bend over all the time. Like the car seat is huge and the changing table is better. So my conspiracy theory is this, that they're trying to make it harder and keep me uncomfortable so that I stay distracted and exhausted and miserable instead of like empowered and you know, wrapping my arms around the next phase of my life, which is like the wise and dangerous maiden, right? I'm still looking for that one. Um, but instead, I'm too pissed because I'm fucking bending over all the time. Yeah. <laughs> my back hurts. Everything hurts. And I think that it's, you know, if they can keep you distracted and angry or obsessed with, you know, this illness or that illness or the cost of this or the cost of that or the weather, then, then you're not, you know, thinking about deeper, bigger, broader, and why that is related to negativity all the time i don't know because it can be used for great kindness and, and goodness also but um apparently that's something to do for it as well well speaking of they and them and, uh, those. and those it was like there was a balloon in the sky and it had to come down but then in the same breath next week there's a hot air balloon convention and everybody wants a ride and i'm like i'm not getting on a hot air balloon after we're shooting those things down <laughs> You yeah. know, does that make sense to you? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Here's the thing. I don't try to make a lot of sense anymore. <laughs> like, I've, abandoned, I've, I've, I've aborted the mission because yeah. if I do, like, I'm toast, man. Like, no. If I try to make sense, like, I, I try to make sense about, like, how to get, like, into my car from my kitchen because it takes, like, seven trips. And so, like, it's, it's, do you, like, how potent? Who needs snow pants? Where are the boots? Who needs mittens? Who needs to eat? What if they decide they're hungry in the car? Do I have enough gas in my car? Probably not. <laughs> Is my tire flat? Because I'm riding this this line of like always. It's like in Nina now. Like, um, is it going to be so snowy that I can't see you on the drive to school? Are we going to be late for school again? Um, like it's it's constant until like I don't really have time. But that sucks because it sucks. There's nothing nice to say about it. Any mom that says they're having fun right now with doing that stuff is lying. Were you, as a child, uh, given the note on your report card, like, makes good use of their time? Or were you like... <laughs> I don't know. I think that on my report card... Because uh, I know that I was a time waster. 
myself. It's definitely escalated the older I get, I think, and then it's it's and now you just shouldn't have opened that. Um, <laughs> um, because I'm just gonna take it and run with it. it it's um, it's a result of some pretty complicated PTSD, honestly. Yeah. Um, and ADD and all the Bs and the disms and the lack of control and being in a state of fear and fight or flight all the time. And your coping mechanisms become so toxic and so overpowering and so strong, but silly, you know, like mm. to most people. But to you, it's you can control it. You know, you can you can make sure that you can A to B in the snow pants and the things. So then you're never gonna get hurt again after you do it. Um, and I think a lot of people, women specifically, um, live like that. Not knowing that that's not normal, um, and and we joke about it, and we aim and upset each other, and we, we dumpster fire ourselves and hot mess mom and fucking whatever. When really it's just a lot of lack of acknowledgement, like lack of people being okay with being uncomfortable with our discomfort or tragedy or whatever. Um, you know, you gotta be okay to get down on your knees and sit with them in the darkness, or. Don't deserve the light. Um, and I think women and mothers and why I speak not as a we're better or smarter, or whatever, but that's all I know. Um, that's all we know is do the damn thing. You know, um, kids gotta eat. Well, you're the one that makes the food. You know, it, the, the 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 imbalance is, is there from day one. Mm. So it's nature and nurture and a whole bunch of racket in between. I'm not sure what you guys have to do no matter what. Well, you know, it's uh, so obviously I'm not a mother, you no. know, I'm, you know, and uh, but you're a great far dad. from it, and you know, beautiful thank you. Um, you know, my wife uh, works remotely most of the time. Uh, there is occasions where she has to go to the office and go on location. Yeah. And those are the interesting days for me as a dad, because it there's no other thing to do other than step up and step into it, right? Yeah. Um, those are the mornings that Elton wakes up and runs out of the bedroom and says, Mom, 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 searches the entire house yeah. before knowing that she's gone and he's stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And then and then we can go about our day. What is that like, the whole stuck with you feeling? Well, I mean, <coughs> it's usually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and, I, I mean, you know, if I've got stuff that I've got to do, like he's gone to gigs before and, yeah. you know, held on to my leg while yeah. I'm playing. And, I sang lullabies um, to my child <laughs> in the car seat while tattooing. Yeah. I did get done in time and daycare was done, so there was that. It's a totally different dichotomy there. But, you know, but when Callie's around and I, I'll try to, you know, I try to engage and just like, yeah, he's mama's boy. So <laughs> you know, what, is, what does that even Can mean, right? <laughs> It's not that fun to be the mama's boy mom sometimes. Oh, I know. Because I know, thing. right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all about the back. It's a mom, 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 and you're just like, I love you. Can I breathe, please? I need a moment. Please I just... let me go to the bathroom. <laughs> Got a poop. <laughs> and you're like, so this is it. This is my life. Like my yeah. choice is uppy on my lap while I'm going to the bathroom or getting yelled at. And she, she's a uppy man. She yeah. Cares. Shit happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh. You know. Yeah. yeah. You do the thing. But it, 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 you know, getting back to the the weather balloon comment, you know, and, and everything else. Some of it's the uh, it's the known and the unknown, mm -hmm. right? And and what we know kind of shapes our future in a way, like how we respond to things, how we react in certain scenarios, or mm -hmm. or how we carry ourselves, you know. Um, and so that's, of course, that's why people are getting in hot air balloons because they know that people know that they're a hot air balloon, not a spy balloon, right? They're not going <laughs> to get shot down, right? Right. Um, but coming from a past um, riddled with trauma, you know, and PTSD, we don't have to get into oh, the ins and outs of that, no, you know. Um, but that, you know, what I see from you in, in numerous situations, um, is a certain, you know, not that you want to be or whatever, but some type of anchoring strength or inspiration to other people to say, 
you know, it's, and it's almost like what Kelly Jackson sometimes says about like there's medicine and music and, you know, we're strength, we have strength in numbers and the more we talk about our experiences or show our friends that we're there for them, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's how we create community and that's how we overcome and that's how we move forward. Yeah, I think that um, for me, I, I needed a reason to have, yeah, I was raised at a young age. Um, and I think I, I, I didn't remember it for a very long time. And then when I did, I didn't talk about it because I was scared that no one would believe me. Um, and then and I didn't want to make anybody mad. And when I did choose to talk about it many, many, many years later, there were those that believed me and there, there, were, there were those that didn't. And it was this just crazy, I mean, it was what I expected, but also disappointing still. Um, but then there were the ones that were like, me too. Thank you. And I was like, you, I got attached to that because if I can, if, if the me too and thank you makes it worth going through it, then that gives me a purpose. And when you need, you need, it can't just be because, you know, like if you, if you can take something terrible that happens to you and use it to help somebody else then you're, st you're starting this, this cycle and circle of healing when, and you're also going back into your own family traumas and, and healing your past as well. Like, if you can have a reason to, to live through the tragedy, then fucking sign me up because who doesn't need that? I mean, it's the whole basis of religion and everything. You need a purpose. And if the purpose is going through a tragedy and making it to the other side so the next person maybe doesn't have to or knows that they're not alone or every time you share your story, somebody else is, is more comfortable sharing theirs. And they're not cutting themselves at night because they, that's the only time they can feel in control, you know? Like, sharing your story is terrifying. Um, and it shouldn't be. It's, you're, you're evaluating this filter that people are gonna receive it through and then you start to look at your own truth and what's true and what's not, but all you know is your truth. But time can change that. And fear can change that, and your perception of yourself can change that. And um, giving each other grace to say it, I think, is is so important. You know, it's it's. I, I, we've got necklaces in the lobby that have hangers in the charm, um, that were made by my apprentice Deanna when um, Roe vs. Wade got overturned. Um, for obvious reasons. But uh, we had a guy in here a couple weeks ago, and he was like, oh, wow, like, you could see him just physically getting uncomfortable. And he's like, it's not like that, like, that really happens, right? And we were like, no, it happens. He's like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm grossed out. And I'm like, good, it should be, because that's, that's why they're there. And he was just freaked by it. But it was sitting there, you know, and like by the end of the, his time spent here, like, Everybody had shared perspectives and stories and across the room while tattoo machines are going and, you know, shenanigans and whatever, but the girls just from a, a necklace, they know, like I shared a story and my client shared a story and that other client's husband who was uncomfortable realized he doesn't have to be so uncomfortable, you know, like he was given grace to sit there and be like, oh, that's disgusting and nobody, nobody shanked him for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, nobody shoved a coat hanger nobody up his butthole. Nobody shoved a coat hanger in his butthole. Like, you know, no, nobody was, nobody. We are not advocating that. We're not no, advocating that. we're not that. advocating <laughs> any of that. Um, he was, he, you know, like, he was comfortable through his discomfort about abortion in a female-owned tattoo shop surrounded by a bunch of feminist women. Um, and he could have just been called an asshole and kicked out. But he didn't. And, um, you know, why not? Well, that's awesome, though, in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because having those conversations and having people be uncomfortable for a little time well, to get through an too, understanding, yeah. it's not like he had to personally go through a traumatic experience yeah, right, himself. Right, And so you know? your comfort in the moment of, of shittiness can be protective for people. You know, it can, it can be the thing that, that makes you step back and say, ah, maybe that was not a good idea. Or, you know, like, 
God forbid some man hears a story about something that happened to me and he has one too many and that really wants that hot girl. But he's like, man, I remember that time that crazy tattoo lady told this story about how it felt and how it affected her. Maybe I'm just going to step back. Or maybe they teach their son that. Or they teach their daughter, you know, to say you're welcome instead of thank you um, more often. Because maybe this cycle will break a little bit. Yeah, we can, we can hope. We should think. There's no place like home. Yeah. All those Florida songs do that. Mm. Sing me a song, Meg. I sing me a song. <laughs> well, since we're talking about dark and heavy shit, let's just do that, shall we? So this, um, yeah, I'll give you a little background on this one. I, um, we used to do this event in college called Take Back the Night, which was um, for date rape and for, you know, like handing out the whistles at the fountain and a bunch of women holding candles and sharing stories and things. And um, I wrote this song about my efforts to take back the night. Leaving Andrew. Thank you. You walked into the bar and you sat right down. A ghost from my past had flown into town. Oh, no, just say. No. No, 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 no. You gave me your sweet, seductive little smile, and then you slithered, Megan, I don't think I've seen you in a while. I look at you, you look at me back. Thinking about all kinds of nasty stuff and I forgot my words. You smile at me and you say things never change. I look up and mumble, oh hell yeah, I think it's strange. I'm still falling to the ground. I'm looking up at you and you're just looking up. No, 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 just say no, 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 I said no, 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 I said no. bad one but um yeah thank you oh, oh, yeah that was one of those where there's like seven more verses that I can never remember and that's okay with me um, want to hear the first song I ever wrote yeah <laughs> I had learned four chords and I um <laughs> right can you guess what they were Oh, you're so smart. And what's the other one? Maybe a little bit of A e? minor. A minor? E or A, you know, it didn't really matter at was the time. It, was it Tom Petty he influenced you? No. Oh. It was a sheet music with guitar tabs on it. I was oh. like, I can do that. That only takes three fingers. Scarborough Fair. Right. <laughs> I sat on my front porch in college and wrote this song, and I was like, oh, my God. 
And I think it's the only song that I ever wrote where I conventionally followed, like, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Like, after that, I was like, just, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. You've tried to play along with me before. You're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, it's not just you that suffers from that affliction. Uh, let's see. All it took for me to see my infatuation with love and you. Well, it was for me, it was for me to simply be inside of the arms of someone new. And he left a note, he left a note for me in my head. As I loudly slept, I slept next to him in my bed. And I I think it read. You're amazing. I think you're beautiful and real. And I think I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the way that you feel. But I know that, well, I guess shit's gonna get a little rough. My relationships, people tell me that they tend to be tough. I'll be sleeping next to you when you wake. I'll be dreaming about all the beautiful music I think we're going to make. I, oh baby, I think we can make it. That one was made up. I wanted a boy to like me. Nobody did, so I wrote about it. And it would happen. Um, I think we call that manifesting these days, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I shall manifest the boyfriends of my dreams at 21. Um, no, I ended up with a hockey player with me too. Oh, jeez. <laughs> did, did, did it help his whistling game? Party trick. Jeez. Um, oh, he was pretty and I didn't care. He was dumb. <laughs> uh, I was like, you're cute. I'll do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your homework. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, it's man. just science, right? Yeah, inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really going to be a doctor too. someday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you now, operating on people who come in. <laughs> are you pre-med? Because I um, exercise and sports science. I wear a lot of gloves. Teens homework after that fiasco. Yeah. Did they get straight A's then? They, they, uh... well, no, because then it was obvious that they were cheating. Because, oh. You know, you got to keep it realistic. Mm. See, and if and... it was too good, it was not realistic. So, you know, the little poet girl had to misspell some words yeah. and omit a <laughs> comma or two. Um, Just remember, it's not my own homework. Uh, it's not really me. Yeah. I spell that word wrong. I'm going to do this left handed. I should. Raise the bar a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, are you a fan of Rick Rubin? No. Did you hear about his new book that came out? He's no. been. I live under a rock. If you're in it, though, oh. you can come inside the rock. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's very, uh, uh, I think it's supposed to be sort of like creativity is simplified or how to live a creative life. Um, but, do you think it's worth it to read a book about how to simplify creativity? You know, and is it just about his experience in that, or is it really sort of like a how-to? You know, is he drawing a roadmap for people, or is it... Is he a super dummy? No. Dang it. 
Uh, anyway, I, I bring that up because I was listening to a lot of different podcasts that he was doing recently, and uh, and one thing that he mentioned in in an episode that I heard was about advice. Huh. You know, and he's like, "Stop taking people's advice, right? That's them. That's their experience. That might not apply to you mm. in such a way, yeah. you know, that it did for them." And, you know, yeah, it's kind of profound, yeah. right? Because how often are we going through life looking for advice? You know, hey, I want to open a tattoo shop. What do I do? Better used to you know, look for life advice. Uh, or if people come to you looking for advice, you know, and you're like, well, just left to take in consideration, you know, the other things that are different, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, there's, um, you know, cause a, I haven't, re I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet myself as, as book or whatever. Um, but it, uh, in a way it's just very, it's very striking, you know, because here you, you've got a guy who was, you know, doing what he was doing when nobody else was doing it and they just did it because they that was what they were called to do. You know, he was right. called to do it, and he felt as though it was the right thing for him and the artist that he was working with and all that sort of stuff. Um, it kind of gets back to that whole, like, encouraging people to, you know, hey, do you. Yeah. <laughs> I will do me, and hopefully they don't, you know, cause explosions or whatever, you know. Um, do you find... Uh, I think there's a loaded question coming and I should lean in. Or oh. I'm ready now. Let me breathe first. Let's do this. Are you going to make me cry, Oprah? Uh, well, <laughs> you, get, you get a tissue and you get a tissue and you get a I'm tissue. Hoping, I always hope I need that car. That tissue's fine. Um, no, because it, it kind of goes to what is that advice that you would offer to somebody who is aspiring to be more than self? Oh, man. In a world that might say, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't cut your hair that way. Don't get that tattoo. Don't play that guitar. Don't blah, blah, blah. You know? Um, how, do you, how do you overcome all those I, voices of... I, you know, for me, I didn't necessarily worry about that stuff. Like, I just did... I got a black sheep Christmas ornament when I was nine and... You've been doing it for a long time. Been, you know, like, <laughs> I, I got guess, stripes. I, clearly, I got stripes. Clearly, I wasn't, you know, do, I wasn't in the box then. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I think, gosh, you could ask the girls that, that work here what I would say, because I'm sure I squawk about shit like that all day long. I say <laughs> yeah. do as I say not as I've done a lot. Yeah. I also say I'm not wrong all the time. I'm the, I'm the, knower, I'm the knower of all things, and I'm not wrong. And then, then like, a week later, they're like, God. Damn, you're you're not wrong. You're not I wrong. Know, not, I don't like being the knower of all things because I it's a burden. Like to be it's wrong, a, it's sometimes. a burden, right? It is. Yeah. It's, it's I don't like it. And it's um, totally okay because you can admit when you are. You're almost excited about it. I love it, man. I I love it when I'm wrong for like, <laughs> it's yeah, it would yeah. be awesome. Um, you know, like what would I say to them? Shut up. Stop worrying about it. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably what I was. If I was listening to them complain about something that the squawkety squawk, whatever, I would just tell them to shut up. I, I think people talk about their feelings. So uh, here's my issue. One of them. Is, is, <laughs> it's become like a, a pandemic of sorts for generationally this new crop of youngster to talk a lot about. So much so that I'm not sure they know how they feel. Uh, it's like it's this, it's just noisy. Uh, there's no action to it at all. Like, I, I, I know what it's like to have a, a kind of problem that you cannot fix. You can't do anything about it. Um, if I'm listening to these kiddos talk about this problem and that problem, my God, they can change them all. How lucky. Uh, so I have a hard time. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say shut up. But then I would, you know, redirect them in, 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 in a way where they may or may not know it. And um, I'm not wrong. 
Does that sound right? Is that what I would do? Um, but if it's, you know, do I follow my dreams or do I take this job or do I marry this guy or do I whatever, um, I often tell people to jump no matter what. Um, and don't worry about the net because it'll be there sometime. It'll be there before you hit the ground. It always is. Um, and when you stand and worry about it too long, the net probably gets annoyed and goes into someone else because it's got a job to do, you know? Um, not a big planner. I can try to plan, and then my PTSD and the OCD and all the bees get in the way of my plans, and I'm late. <laughs> so I should just jump. <laughs> like, you should just come back there and then grab me by the dirty dress off and be like, you're on. Yeah. I just said, take two months of time. Where's my hook? Where's my hook? Put it on the cookie cane. Um, and it would have been all, we would have been all the time. Speaking of, I'm not so sure that there's a battery in that that works. Yeah, I know. It's been short on the whole thing. Okay. But it it's all right. It That's why we got a microphone. It. We got yeah, we're good. So <laughs> excited. Extenuating things. I had high hopes when I bought this, too. The I was like, I'm going to do the things. You know, I'm going to fill my cup. I, like, I deserve the new guitar because I had sold my the guitar that I wrote all of my songs on, I sold it um, when I lived at the coach house apartment because mm. she was nice and fancy and I was broke and I needed diapers and rent money. And I felt bad because she was just sitting in the corner and she had more stories to tell, so I sold it. Mm. And I haven't had a guitar since. Um, I drove about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And man, did I beat myself up for buying this and I'm still beating myself up for it because damn it, I need diapers. Um, <laughs> again. But, uh, I did it, and then I, it's this weird thing every day where I see the case. I'm like, that's perfect. And then I change the diaper, or I go to work, or but I carry the case with me, which is another thing I gotta carry, right? But it's filling my cup, but it's also hurting my back. Um, and it's a metaphor of sorts, you know. Like, it, there's some people who are like, oh, you're, you're gonna start gigging, and you want to get where you play out, and you're gonna this, you're gonna that, you're doing a show, and you're throwing yourself a party. And I'm like, whoa. Um, I'm just. I'm holding myself accountable to fill my cup, and the cup, I'm pissed at the cup until like right now, now I'm okay with it, but getting here sucks, man, it sucks, <laughs> this thing, like, I don't even, I don't know this guitar at all yet, um, the strings are brand new, they won't stay in tune to, to save its life, I tattooed all day, so I have noisy machines in there, I can't hear anything, um, my hands are numb and tingly, so I can't really feel the strings that well, my battery's dead, but... <laughs> I would say jump anyway, god damn it. Yeah. Because what's the worst that's gonna happen? Like, I'm gonna make an ass out of myself? I do that every day anyway. Like the gas station. <laughs> Big deal. Um, who cares? It's at the end of the day, that's all you got. Like, when you're gone, you're gone. And and your legacy will be what it'll be. But I tell you what, people will forget it mostly. And um, they're not gonna remember if my battery worked. They'll remember, you know, the weird thing I said or that I didn't make any sense or that one song that actually made sense was kind of cool. Um, but my cup will have been full and, and that's what matters. Um, hell, you might invite me to do this in another year and I'll have the same battery on it. Or <laughs> I will have a whole bunch of new songs. Be like, I'm going to use my guitar to like, afford it's, diapers. It's been in the corner. <laughs> no, there will be no more diapers in my life. <laughs> Lord, that the no, yeah. no, no, nope. Um, no, but then I hope to have a, my, my goal is, boy, do I have a big old chunk of time to write about. Hmm. And uh, I kept saying I didn't want to pick a scab on a wound that needed stitches when I only had super glue. Um, I don't care if I bleed out everywhere now. Sounds like incredible bravery. Thank you. Yeah. You should put me. Oh, what? What? Would you grace my my tattoo shop with a with a Scott Kirby sign? Oh me? Oh come on! You do this for a living. Oh like, no! Please, I, I, could, I couldn't possibly. I couldn't possibly do that. I don't get to that. go out to see. Like, oh my like, goodness! Like, like, oh jeez! Like, what would I even do? What do you want to hear? Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> well, be careful yeah, what you wish for, all right? Inverted, the black chest got too low. Like, you, know, you play whatever your heart desires. You can even play more than one song. Oh, my. Yeah. 
Um, well. I was like, no, what? No, that would be me. More ice? <laughs> I shall grab my guitar. Oh, boy. You don't want to borrow this one, do you? Yeah, yeah. let's turn on the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly but correct. But she farted. She farted. She farted. She's She's Hello. Shy. She's here. Okay, we lost it. I only lost like three times. Does anybody need a white claw? Oh. Yes. Do any white girls need white claws? Wait, that was a yes? I think that there were several. I don't know. I'll just bring the box. The voices. <laughs> just bring the box, honey. When in doubt, bring the box. When in doubt, bring the box. There you go. Oh, my. Thank you. Mm. Indeed. For adoption? Well, I'm an orphan, so you know, open market. I shall be pleased. Hmm. Interesting. You like it? It's a lipel. Bonjour, mon lipel. Well, it's, uh, you know, because I'm not, uh, it's not really set up for me to do this. <laughs> do you want to switch seats? No. That would be quite easy. No, that one's set up for pretty people. <laughs> this one's, this that's, one's that's so sweet. Yeah. That's yeah, so sweet. The talent. That's yeah, the talent right. seat. The talker, that one. That's set up for the talker <laughs> posing as a new person. It's totally fine. Are we doing this one together? I don't know what you're doing. But I'm sitting here, so we're in it together. Okay. Well, if I ran, I'd knock stuff over for sure. Jump? Nah. I don't mean literally jump. What key do you like that so. one in? I have no idea. Okay. Well, let's, what? let's try a happy medium. That sounds so cheap. Remember how we did this 10, 15 years ago? No. You sang it, and I just kind of pretended to. There was wine and whiskey. I have whiskey. a video. I was too scared. I was like, oh, I couldn't do it.
do it. Are we trading verses? I'm, you're just doing the thing. Oh, I'm just doing all of it? I'll jump in when I feel like it. Oh, that's so much work. <laughs> if I get carried away, you can feel free to back off. You take the lead, honey. I'm going to change keys then. I hope, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you the video of 15 years yeah. ago. The exact same thing happened. No you way. Dealers, you were like, and that, I was like. It's your turn, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nothing. Um, it's my birthday. I don't have to say it. I'm too scared. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Same thing. Oh, That's well, it. it's pretty. Uh, You're playing it pretty good these days. We'll preface it by uh, just reminding the people on the on the live stream out there that uh, it's it's not. Um, We're breaking the rules. Breaking all the it's, rules. It's, I I wouldn't have said yes if I couldn't break the rules. Yeah right. Got the egg shaker. Who's got an egg shaker? Any egg shaker? Good shake, Alex. This <laughs> probably works. <laughs> got a fast car, I want to take it to anywhere, maybe we can make a deal, maybe together we can get somewhere, any place is better, Storms here, got nothing to lose, maybe we'll make something, me myself, I got nothing to prove. You got a fast car. I got a plan to get us out of here Been looking at the convenience store Man, to save just a little bit of money Won't have to drive too far Let's cross the border into the city You and I can both get jobs Time to see what it means to be living So my old man, got a problem Live with a body that's the way it is His body's too old for working His body's too young to look like this Mama went off and left him She didn't want from life than he could give Somebody gotta take care of him So I quit school, that's what I did You got a fast car Is it fast enough so we can fly away? We gotta make a decision. Leave tonight or live and die this way. Leave tonight or live and die this way. So I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, felt like I was drunk. City lights straight out the force. Drums filled now, took around my shoulders. I had a feeling that I belonged. Night. Had a feeling that I could be someone, be someone. You got a fast car. We could cruise and entertain ourselves. Still ain't got a job. Work in the market as a checkout girl. I know things that get better. You'll find work and I'll get promoted. We'll move out of the shelter. Buy big house and live in the suburbs. I've always wanted to live in the suburbs. Oh, the verb life. <laughs> so I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, felt like I was drunk. City lights laid out the force. Rocks filled mass up around my shoulders. Now I hit a feeling that I belong. I had a feeling that I could be someone, be someone. You had a feeling that I could be someone. You got a fast car. I got a job that pays all our bills Stay out drinking late at the bar See more your friends than you do of your kids I always hope for better But maybe together you and me would find it Got no plans, ain't going nowhere Take a fast car and keep on Keep on driving Yeah Keep on driving You 
got a fast car So fast enough so you can fly away You gotta make a decision Leave tonight or live and die this way Leave tonight or live and die this way So I remember when we were driving Driving in your car Speed so fast I felt like I was drunk City lights laid out the force Your arms fell now so around my shoulders And I, I, I had a feeling that I belong And I, I had a feeling that I could be someone, be someone With a feeling that I could oh, be someone That was fun. <laughs> what a lovely audience you all are. <laughs> we did much better that time. You know, not that all audiences are bad, but some of them don't clap so loudly. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know when the song is over. Yeah, that's that's right. also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, then what? That, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty satisfied. After pretty that. pretty stoked, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, we can we can certainly wrap it up if, if you'd like to. Uh, yeah, sure. We get we get you out of here before 10 p.m., huh? All oh, right, I think. Jeez, so. you're slacking off, huh? I am. Uh. I am. All right, call my boss. <laughs> call your boss. <laughs> call you the boss. Mm -hmm.